When I started learning about GIS, the hardest part for me was understanding projections. The concept is simple enough. You can't portray a round globe on a flat surface without distorting it. The hard part for me was the details, like what the heck is false easting? I've gotten better at this, but there's some good news. If you're using QGIS to create maps and not doing serious spatial analysis, you don't really have to understand everything about projections to use them effectively. Projections involve some pretty complicated math. Here are some examples. I'm going to skip all of that because I don't really understand or care very much about it. If you're interested in it, there are plenty of online resources about it. My goal in this video is to show you the most useful projections and how to use them in QGIS. In this video, I'll break down maps into these categories. Maps of the world. Maps of the USA. Maps of U.S. states, counties, and cities. And maps of other countries. I'll start with maps of the world. World map projections involve the most distortions, since they try to project an entire sphere onto a flat surface. There are four kinds of distortions. Directions, distances, areas, and shapes. Every projection distorts one or usually more of these. Some projections are good for areas close to the equator. Others are best suited for east-west or north-south areas. I'll load two shape files from my world map, the countries and oceans files from the Natural Earth website. QGIS applies the default projection, which is WGS84, also called the geographic or plate carré projection. WGS84 is a decent projection to use for world maps. The continents are easily recognizable and the overall shape is rectangular. Antarctica is really huge, but South America and Africa are how people are used to seeing them, so it's not a bad choice for maps of those continents. The next projection I'll try is Mercator. This is one of the oldest projections and it's what most people see on school maps. It's also what Google Maps and most other web mapping apps use. To change my map, I'll click on the CRS button in the bottom right corner. It says EPSG4326 now. This opens the coordinate reference system window. Here's where we change the map projection. To find the Mercator projection, I'll type Mercator in the search field. A bunch of options appear. I'll choose the simplest one, World Mercator, and click OK. Here's what I get. If I zoom out, you can see that Antarctica now extends to infinity. This illustrates one of the problems with this projection. For areas near the equator, Mercator does pretty well, but the farther away you get, the worse the distortion gets. You can also see that Greenland appears bigger than Africa. It's actually the size of Saudi Arabia. Because of these problems, be careful using Mercator. It produces a rectangular map that's more compact than WGS84, but the size distortion is severe. Next, we'll try the Miller Cylindrical Projection. I'll type Miller into the search field, then click on World Miller Cylindrical and click OK. This produces a result similar to Mercator, but with slightly less distortion. The result is a rectangular map that's fairly compact. If you're going to use Mercator, use Miller instead. Next, I'll try the Gull Stereographic Projection. This is used by Rand McNally for a lot of their maps. I'll enter Gaul into the search field and select World Gaul Stereographic, then click OK. This projection stretches the land areas from north to south. The final rectangular projection I'll try is Patterson. This falls between Miller and WGS84 and is my recommended choice for rectangular maps of the world. Now we'll move on to some projections that aren't rectangular. First, I'll try the Winkle Triple. This is used by the National Geographic Society for world maps. The result is a pleasing oval shape. Next, we'll try Robinson, another projection used by the National Geographic Society. This is also a good choice for world maps. It's less distorted than the Winkle. Two other projections are also excellent choices for world maps, Equal Earth and Natural Earth. These both offer a good balance between the different distortions to produce a pleasing map that's easy for people to recognize.
Natural Earth 2 gives a more rounded shape. I'll move now to maps of the US. I'll open a shapefile of the US. It opens in NAD83, which is basically the same as WGS84. It's easy to recognize this projection by the width of the US and the straight line US Canada border. First, I'll try the Miller projection. This reduces the width somewhat and still leaves the US Canada border as a straight line. This is a useful projection, especially for thematic maps. Patterson also works well. The other two US projections that are useful are both conic projections. These produce a U.S.-Canada border that's curved. First, I'll try Lambert Conformal Conic. This results in a pleasing, fairly compact shape. Next, I'll try Albers Equal Area Conic. This is similar, but you'll notice that the U.S. is a little taller north-south with this projection. I like both of these projections and don't have a real preference between them. If you're creating a U.S. map that also needs to show Alaska and Hawaii, it's not very practical to show them in their actual locations. A better solution is to separate them from the data file and apply state plane projections to them. Here are two easy ways to do this. The first method is to click on the Select Features by Area tool and then click on Alaska to select it. The second method is to open the attribute table for the layer and look for the name column, then click on it to sort it. Click on the row for Alaska, then close the table. Once Alaska is selected, go to the Layers palette, right-click, and select Export Save Selected Features As. Make sure Esri Shapefile is selected. Name the file, save it to your computer, ignore the other settings, then click OK. Repeat this process for Hawaii, and also for Puerto Rico if you want to include it. Create a new QGIS project and open the Alaska shapefile. Open the CRS window and type Alaska into the search field. You'll see a lot of choices. That's because Alaska is so big. You can try different ones, but NAD83 slash Alaska Albers gives a good result. Repeat this process for Hawaii. Once you've reprojected Alaska and Hawaii, you can combine them with the contiguous US map in QGIS or export them and combine them in Illustrator. Every US state has one or more projections created specifically for that state called a state plane. While you can use any projection you want for a state, the state planes depict the states as accurately as possible. I always use a state plane for state maps unless I have a really good reason not to. Here are some examples. Here's California in WGS84, and now using a state plane. Next, I'll try Colorado. Here's WGS84, and now the state plane. Next, I'll try Michigan, first in WGS84, and then a state plane. And finally, here's North Carolina in WGS84, and now with a state plane. For maps of counties, use the state plane. Some states have planes for the northern and southern or east-west parts of the state. If so, use the appropriate one for the county. For most city maps, the amount of distortion a projection creates is minimal, so it's not very important. In general, use the state plane. Many other countries have a specific CRS similar to a state plane. These usually give good results. When you're in the CRS window, Enter the country name in the search field and see what you get. There's no such thing as a correct or best projection. The best one to use depends on the map you're creating. If you're creating a map of the U.S. to show election results, using the world's sinusoidal projection is probably not a good idea. If you need a world map to be rectangular, for a wider map, use WGS84. For a narrower map east to west, use Patterson. For non-rectangular maps, there are several good choices. Robinson, Equal Earth, and Natural Earth. For the widest possible U.S. map, use WGS84. To me, this looks too wide, but I see it all the time. 
For a less wide map, use Miller Cylindrical or Patterson. Both of these produce a straight U.S.-Canada border. For a more natural-looking U.S. map, use Albers Equal Area Conic or Lambert Conformal Conic. For state maps, use the State Plain CRS. Thanks for watching. See you next time.